Hey guys, welcome to our lesson, and let's get started. Today's will be a bit shorter than usual. Alright, so today what I really want to focus on is solving logs, specifically when we have one log, when we have two logs, and then when we have no logs. So the point of this lesson is to solve for our variable. We've been having a little trouble in class when we're solving for our variable, so I really want to get this lesson to help us out. Uh, so whenever we only see one log in a problem, we're either going to swoosh, meaning we're either going to change that log to an exponential, or we're going to do a change of base, and then we're going to solve for x. If we have two logs, one on each side, then we're going to cancel them out using the one-to-one -one property so that you just both get canceled, and we're remained with our remaining numbers, which is not the base, or we condense them to get them on one side, and then we solve them. If we have no logs in a problem, and so in this case, that would mean we'd have something like an x in the exponent, so we'd have a variable in the exponent. What we're going to do is we got to log both sides, so we got to convert this exponential to a log in order to solve for that x. All right, so let's get started, and we'll first start out with some one log examples. So again, you guys have done this before. When you see something like log base 2 of 45, equals x. This right here, that's easily done because you can do change of base. So the way you'd solve that is you'd say log of 45 divided by log of 2 equals x and you simply plug that in your calculator. So in my calculator I'm going to plug in log of 45 divided by log of 2 and it gives me 5.49 and that equals x. Alright, so easy enough. In that example I use change of base. Let's look at this other one. In this other one I can't use change of base. Why can't I use change of base? Well, let's look. It says 4x minus 2. That x right there doesn't let me use change, change of base because I can't just plug in log 4 of x minus 2 divided by log of 4 because my calculator doesn't know what x is. It's a variable. So what I do here is I got to convert this logarithm to an exponent. So remember, the base of my logarithm is also the base of my exponent. I swoosh it over and then it becomes 4 to the third equals 4x minus 2. And now it's just a matter Notice the log went away because I did the inverse. Now it's just a matter of solving for x. So 4 to the third is 64 equals 4x minus 2. So I need to get x alone, so I'm going to add 2 on both sides. If I add 2 on both sides, I'm just going to continue over here, guys, because I don't have any room. So look over here. I add 2 to both sides, I get 66 equals 4x, divide 4 on both sides. If I divide 4 on both sides, I get 16.5 equals x. And this should be on your guided notes packet, guys. By the way, if you haven't looked, on your guided notes packet for the next day, just flip it over and you'll see one log, two log, and no log. All right. Let's try this approach. So this is when I have two logs. So if I have two logs, the first thing I'm going to look for is are each of them on one side? So confirm, all right, I have this right here and I have this right here. Are they the same base? Yeah, they're both base of 7. Now I can cancel them out. So go ahead and cancel them out. And you'll get negative x equals 3x minus 16. Alright, same procedure, you're going to solve for x. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add 16 to both sides so I can get rid of this 16. And then I'm going to add this x so I can get all the x's on one side. So I get 4x equals 16. Divide both sides by 4. And I get 4 equals x. Alright. Let's move on to another one with two logs. Make sure to copy this down in your notes. 
and shoot me a text if you have any questions. All right. So now we have log base 6 of x equals log base 6 of 2x minus 2. All right, well, do my logs have the same base? Yes, they do. They're on opposite sides of the equal sign, so I can cancel these out. I have x equals 2x minus 2. Solve for x, so I'm going to get rid of this 2 over here by adding and then I'm going to subtract this x on both sides so I get 2 equals x that's my final answer alright and the tricky part is I'm going to give you a lot of different styles of these problems so you have to know what to do log to x plus log 5 equals log 405 since it didn't tell me what the base is I know it's 10 so I'm going to use my properties well the first property I see is the exponent property so I'm going to get log of x squared plus log of 5 equals 405. All right, do I see another property? Well, I see this addition sign. That's going to tell me that it's going to be the product property. So that's going to be log of x squared times 5 equals log of 405. And there should be a log right there, guys. Sorry about that. All right, now I have two logs. They're on separate sides of the equal sign. They have the same base. I can cross them out. I get x squared times 5 equals 405. Now I need to get x alone, so I'm going to divide both sides by 5. I get 81 equals x squared. need to find the square root of x squared, and that is 9 x equals 9. So notice in this one I had to condense first before I could cancel. So you always want to try condensing if you can. Problem. So notice I have a 3 right there so I'm going to use the exponential property and I'm going to put that to the third plus log base 2 of 5 equals 7 so now what I want to do is I want to combine my logs because I have that addition so I know there's going to be multiplication going on so that's going to be log base 2 of x to the third times 5 equals 7 alright well can I solve this well yeah it's like what we remembered earlier we have an x in the exponent so I can just convert this and this is going to be 2 to the seventh power equals x to the third times 5. Well, my calculator, I type in 2 to the seventh power. I got 128. Divide that by 5. I get 25.3 when I divide it by 5. And then I'm going to find the cube root of it. So I raise it to the 1 third and I get x equaling 2.947. So what I first did is I raised 2 to the 7th, and I got 128. I divided it by 5, and then I find the cube root in order to solve for x. All right. So when we have no logs, we're going to isolate the exponential and then log both sides. So we've got to isolate this exponential. Is my exponential isolated? Well, yeah, the only thing I see is my base and my exponent on this side. So now how do I solve for the variable in the exponent? Well, simple. I log. The log of my exponent becomes, I'm sorry, the base of my exponent becomes the base of my log. So I get log base 25 of 125, and that's going to equal 2x. All right, well, this right here is just change of base. So I have log of 125 divided by log of 25. Remember, base always goes on the bottom. And I get 1.5. So 2x equals 1.5. Now I need to divide by 2 on both sides in order to solve for x. 1.5 divided by 2 is x equals 0.75. 
All right, let's see one that it's not isolated yet. So, all right, now we can do one that has the seven is the base of my exponential, but I have a five out here, and I got to get rid of that five. So in order to get rid of that five, I'm going to subtract on both sides because I want to make sure my exponential is isolated. So I'm going to get seven to the x minus three equals twenty-five. Now, I need to solve for my x, which is in my exponent, so my variable is my exponent, so the base of my exponential becomes the base of my log. So I get log base 7 of 25 equals x minus 3. And now I know what to do here, right guys? Change the base. So in my calculator, I'm going to type in log of 25 divided by log of 7 and that gives me 1.65 that gives me 1.65 so x minus 3 so now I need to get x alone so I'm going to add this 3 to both sides and I get x equals 4.65 alright that's it for now so just make sure you have this all copied in your notes if you have any questions shoot me a text and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.